Who is Monica Helms? She's creator of the trans pride flag, nuclear submariner, activist, author. She's best known for designing this flag, but she is so much more than just that. I wanted my own flag to hang behind my desk here, so as I sew it, let's learn about Ms. Helms. Most of what I've learned about Ms. Helms came from her autobiography, More Than Just a Flag. I have an affiliate link for it below. She has an entertaining writing style, and I could not fit it all into this short video, and even if I could, that would not be ethically or legally appropriate. So if you want to know more, I do suggest checking out the book. Born Robert Monica had chosen to keep her family name a secret in order to protect her mother and her sons, taking on the name Helms when she transitioned. As a young child, she remembers wanting to wear the pretty dresses the other girls wore, and even prayed to be turned into a girl. Monica was the child of an Air Force mechanic. While she moved a lot, Phoenix, Arizona was her home. Her parents owned a home there, and after his Air Force career ended, they returned to Phoenix. In 1970, Monica received her draft card for Vietnam. 79. This low number meant she would be called to serve soon. Coming from a military family, Monica was happy to serve, but wished to do so on her terms. So she enlisted in the Navy before she was drafted. She states, I signed up to go through the Naval Nuclear Power Program and to eventually serve on submarines. Visions of Sea View and 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea danced in my head. I couldn't wait to look out that big window at the front of the sub. Boy, would I be in for a shock about the reality of submarine life. That's from her autobiography on page 23. Despite her harsh awakening when she found herself in a big black tube, she spent the next eight years serving her country on these subs. She served as a machinist on the Francis Scott Key and the Flasher. She states that while this time kept the girl in the shadows from emerging, it did help develop skills that would help her later when she became an activist. While in the Navy, Monica began to cross-dress. Knowing that being caught could get her kicked out, she kept it a secret. In her autobiography, she tells some anecdotes about being almost caught on more than one occasion. After she left the Navy, she no longer needed to keep her girl in the shadows, and she began to let her out much more. Still being timid, though, in a world that does not support trans folk, she kept her cross-dressing private. Dressing to go to clubs, but not in everyday life. And then one Halloween, she came to work in heels and a short skirt. It is amazing how many ladies start letting themselves out on Halloween. Soon, she met an amazing woman and married her. She states that she had told her wife about her cross-dressing, but her wife did not really understand and became angry about it when she saw it the first time. While her wife eventually became more understanding, she never really truly understood it and did not support Monica. When Monica came out completely, her marriage ended. Her parents also said they did not want to see her anymore. Eventually, her parents would come around, but not without some trauma. All this led her to join other groups and begin activism. By 1999, she was part of BiNet, the Bisexual Network. Michael Page, who had designed the bisexual pride flag earlier, said, the trans community should have a pride flag. So Monica decided to design one. She went with Two blue stripes, one on the top and one on the bottom. These represent boy. The two stripes inside those are pink, representing girl. And the white stripe 
in between the pinks represent everyone on the trans spectrum who does not fall into either boy or girl, such as gender neutral, agender, people in transition, and more. This flag now hangs in the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C., along with some other memorabilia from her military and activism time. Monica started activism by marching in parades. She marched with that flag in many parades, starting in her hometown of Phoenix and eventually in many other states around the country. While she was marching in these parades, she was working for Sprint, and eventually she got the company to update some of their policies to be more trans-inclusive. She worked with many organizations, both in her home state of Arizona and later Georgia and to the national stage. This started when she became the first trans person from Georgia to be elected to a political party's convention. That year, she was one of eight transgendered people at the National Democratic Convention. Those eight people became the first transgender caucus. They found transphobia was thriving in the LGB community. The human rights campaign even refused to support trans-inclusive language in the leg legislation on hate crimes and workplace discrimination. While the H HRC now supports fully inclusive language, the earlier language hurt the HRC relations with the trans community so much that it took years for them to rebuild that relationship. Monica, being a veteran, also supported veterans. She helped found the Transgender American Veterans Association. You can see a link to their website below. The work of Tava found some very disturbing statistics. One such statistic stated that 16% of transgendered military personnel had been raped while on duty. With these statistics, Tava was able to give input to the VHA directive that made it clear that the Veterans Affairs must support transgendered veterans. As you can see, Monica Helms did a lot to support the transgendered community in the United States. 